Hey, hello again. I have a question. Do you have something that you need to do every day, at least preferably every day? And I, I don't mean breathing, eating and sleeping and all that, all that stuff. I mean, it's this habitual thing that if you do not do it um, for more than two days, you get all cranky and all, you know, sort of, I don't know, richety, if that's even a word. Um, I am asking that question because in this new tendency of mine to um, base the episodes on a recent event, well, if you know this podcast, I often talk about this place called Steiger 14, Pier 14. And unfortunately, even though I do not own it, but unfortunately, it's been getting busier and busier. So I have relocated, actually quite some time ago, I, I relocated to this other place. I've even mentioned it before. And um, because I go there quite often, you there, there are often four or five guys who fish there. They're not always there at the same time. And there's one in particular, uh, most of them I nod to, but there's one, it sort of evolved from the nod to the actual hay, you know, and the wave and that kind of thing. And the other day, even uh, we reached the point of conversation and he said, look, or he asked, he said, what do you do? I see you out there. Are you an artist? And of course I'm feeling, hey, he thinks I'm an artist. But at the same time, I'm also finding it funny that the thing he sees me doing, he believes that is the domain of artists. I think it's just, I'm just a human being. And what it is, I'm just staring out at the water. So sometimes, um, for example, in the summer, I was often, especially during the shutdown period, so I was often, you have these gray boxes on these piers and these boxes provide power to the boats if the boats would be present. And so I often sit on there uh, recently, and this is a sort of brand new development, uh, I don't know why, the weather hasn't been too bad, so I've been out there with, uh, downstairs we have this folding chair that we use to sit in the street during the summer on a nice and warm day. So I've taken that uh, folding chair, put it in this big bag, uh, coffee, uh, yellow pad, sometimes computer, and I got there and I'm sitting. And actually, one of the days I was out there, I made, I don't know why, I just since I'm sitting out there doing something that was sort of working, I set my phone up to make this time lapse. So I'm going to link to that time lapse. It appears on the Amsterdamica side of the site. Anyway, so basically he asks, so what do you do? And I say, well, I like water. I like staring at water. I don't know. I just like being there. And I never really thought of why I like this. And that set in motion a whole series of um, uh, thoughts and memories. And I realize that I have always, as long as I can remember, had this thing where I stop at the water's edge. It could have something to do with uh, being uh, growing up next to a river, because a lot of, a huge number of my childhood memories involve me doing something along the banks of the Thames. So it could be just lying there or sitting on the steps or staring into the water at those insects that sort of walk across the water, uh, noticing the frog spawn, I believe that's in spring. Um, I remember the swans. <laughs> uh, there was this story that swans would pluck out your eyes, and one day I saw these zoologists who, I don't know, they were tagging the swan, and I thought, well, if they can, <laughs> if they can hold the swan, I can do it. And I said, I asked them what they were doing, and they told me that, oh, they were I, they mentioned something, I think it was tagging, but whatever. They were putting those little metal rings around their feet. And I could assist, well, assist in the sense that I could give them a ring and they put it on the swan. And so I thought, oh, wow, I'm amazing. Uh, <laughs> that's a childhood thing. Um, also, uh, boats, people in boats, waving. Uh, I'm sure I developed fantastic shoulder muscles from all the waving I did. And I think children love waving because... Even now, for example, when I'd be on uh, Steiger 14 uh, during the pre-COVID period, so you'd have all these canal boats passing at least once a week, there was this kid or some kids who the boat would be pretty close and you're just sort of staring into the water and suddenly you find yourself staring at this person waving at you and you wave back. And there, I feel there is that little, um, 
glint of victory. I think when, when you wave at a child, uh, or when a child waves at you and you wave back, there's like, yes, they wave to me. So you have that. Then let's see, um, for example, when I lived in London, I always found the time to walk along the Thames, even if I didn't need to. I just, it's, it's not, uh, I mean, diff the central part is not very beautiful. <laughs> it's interesting, it's not beautiful. But once you move out, it does get nicer. Um, let's see what else on holidays, quite often holidays. For me, a holiday for us is not sort of jumping around all over the place. A holiday is going somewhere and doing as little as possible. And it helps if there's this huge expanse of water in front of you when you, when you are doing as little as possible. At least this is my version of, of uh, events. Then um, often at night, for example, just something as simple, because we live right in the middle of the city, something as simple as getting rid of the rubbish. You take the rubbish out. Then I always take a walk. And no matter what walk I take, it involves standing and just looking over the canals probably looking at the reflection of lights on the canals or just, I don't know, there's always something to see. Water just does that, you know. Um, I think the previous episode was about leaves I saw on the water. So again, there's me walking along the water's edge. Then, um, oh yeah, there's this other place where I used to live, a place called Hasper Plus. I would very often, for example, early in the morning, I'd walk, get up and I'd walk around the lake which was about 5.6 kilometers or something. I had a brief period when I was jogging. <laughs> but as you hear from my laughter, I ain't no jogging person. So, um, but I just would always stop. There's always, oh, I'd stop here, I'd stop there and stare across the water. And it was never, ever the same because you could have similar weather but the wind would be different so the ripples on the water would be different so the reflections on the water of the clouds would just behave in a slightly different fashion um once in a very long while it would get so cold of course in winter it would freeze over so you'd see people skating across it and that creek creek sound of the ice um generally speaking in sort of more regular circumstances quite often at night if i had been working too hard and my head was just on fire, then I'd go to the, uh, there was a particular spot with three um, seat, one, two, I think two seats, uh, sort of park benches, and you could sit there and just look across the water, and the way it was positioned, you actually, your eye line was pretty close to the water, so you weren't really looking down on the water, you really were looking across it, and you'd hear the sound of all these ducks, or I, I guess they're ducks, they, they make, you know, I'm not going to even attempt to copy it. <laughs> But they'd make the, you know, you hear all these sort of duck calls, you know, from one place and it would sound as if they're having this conversation with one another. Or I know once or twice the moon was so positioned that as it dropped down, then it gave you that sort of postcard image with the reflection of the moon dancing across the water. That would be, that, that was always very nice. Um, and it was always this sense of space, you know, all these cases of standing in front of the water's edge. There was always the sense of, um, I don't know, just oh, breathing. And when, uh, for example, I remember a couple of years ago, I, I went to Abuja, that's the in Nigeria, the capital city, and there isn't much water there. I mean, you see it here and there, but there isn't, I, maybe there is a lake somewhere around, but I didn't visit it. And at a point, I just started getting nervous. And I can't, it, the only thing I could feel was that, even though I had some wonderful views, I'd climb up these hills and see forever and ever and ever, and it was just amazing, and the things I would see. But I really did miss that calming effect of, you know, sort of standing at the water's edge and enjoying myself. So, yeah, that's, I guess, all I have to say. Um, for those of you who are listening, stroke, watching on the Amsterdamica channel, well, there are a few more minutes of uh, video to enjoy. And for those of you on the podcast, yeah, well, um, talk to you soon.